Why are you so dead set against safety tools? Well, for starters, who are they for? Really? Because if you're playing with your regular group, then you already know what wigs some people out, what some people don't like, and maybe you tailor your game to avoid those things, or maybe you use them to add emotional impact to a particular scene or something that you want to really, you know, hit that player hard. You know, the same way a filmmaker might choose to use giant spiders as the antagonist in their B movie because fear of spiders is a common phobia and you want to give people that thrill, right? So in those instances, you don't need them. Um, the other instance where they might get used is at a convention game or a store game, something like that. And in those, you typically have a timed slot, two, three, four hours maybe. At a convention, it's going to be a one-shot, almost certainly. So how do you have the time to go through all of that? rigmarole those sheets of trigger warnings and then you've got to memorize them and all the rest of it right or your game's going to be disrupted by an x card pull or a lines and veils or or whatever else you just don't have the time so what are they for <laughs> where, where can they be used in a way that is effective neither of those instances either because they're completely unnecessary, I mean, I think they're completely unnecessary everywhere at all times, or they're eating into your time, which is sparse and set aside for gaming. So, yeah, who, who are they for? And, and what are they for? Because you're playing a tabletop role-playing game. It's all in your imagination. It's words. It's a, it's a conversation. They can't actually hurt you unless someone puts a bullhorn next to your ear and bellows it, perhaps. Then, maybe. But otherwise, the, the biggest risk of being hurt around a gaming table is stepping on a D4. So, who are they for? Nobody. What are they for? Nothing. Uh, <laughs> it, it's an empty virtue signal. Um... So, and it's based upon a false premise, this idea that you can't separate reality from fantasy, which you can. And so far as we know, gamers are better at than anybody else. So the, the whole idea stems from a false premise about the, the power that role-playing games have. And I think stories and games and things do have power, just not that power and not to that degree. So I, I think the whole thing is based on a on a false premise. Um, it's not helpful, right? So if you are upset or triggered by something, let's stick with spiders, for example, and I include spiders in my game, and you object, and I change it to gnomes or some shit, right? That's not helpful to you. If you have a problem with spiders, the best way to overcome it is exposure therapy. And there is nowhere safer than a game table where it's just words that can't possibly touch you or crawl over your skin or anything else. That is about the safest environment to be exposed to the idea of spiders that there is. And that is useful to you. Whereas indulging in trigger warnings and all that nonsense tends to reinforce people's problems due to lack of exposure so it's not even helpful and it's disrespectful as well you've got the games master who spent god knows what amount of time putting together an adventure for you setting it all up you know maybe even generate pre-generating characters or, or whatever and then abruptly either before or in the middle of a game you can just arbitrarily and with many of these safety tools without any explanation tell them not to include this, that, or the other in the game. And you're expected to go along with it, or you have to go along with it if it's a, a convention or a, or a store game. And they don't have to provide any explanation whatsoever. Not only is this ripe for abuse by certain players, 
But yeah, it's massively disrespectful, not only to the games master, but to the other players around the table. And it becomes risky to be a games master who wants to engage in even the most milk toast or, or of edgy elements. Right? If, if even having spiders in a dungeon is too much, how are you supposed to do anything artistic or demanding or, or challenging? It's just the, the risk is going to be enormous and you could well end up banned for life from a, one convention and probably others because they'll follow suit all for someone else's misinterpretation of what you're doing or then imposing their personal problem on your table. And you've, you've always had the option as an individual to time out, right? To say, I, I can't really handle this sort of thing. I'm just going to step away for a few minutes. Let, let me know when this scene's over. You know, you've always had that option. Or to not go to the table if it's obvious that this adventure isn't for you. You know, you've always had that option. And that's much less disruptive than insisting a scene stop or fade to black or whatever else. So it's not for anyone. It's not for any purpose. Even if it were, it would be counterproductive and it's massively disrespectful to everyone around the table. And it's unnecessary. You've always had the option to just leave or not to play. So that's why I hate them. <laughs> Pointless.